So this is going to be the first of many nutrition talks that we're going to give uh, in, in the launching of Fuel. Um, so we're going to talk more about why we launched Fuel as we kind of go through this and give you an idea of, of what the program is. Um, but this is, uh, I'll start out with, this is a labor of love for us. This is something that we've wanted to do for an extraordinarily long time. Alice and I have owned Odin for eight years now. Um, and it's not that we, it's not that we didn't want to have a nutrition program the, the whole time. Many of you know that we have a saying around here, uh, that is full ass. Uh, and, and the meaning of that for us is that we don't do anything half ass. And so when we wanted to launch a nutrition program, we wanted to have the bandwidth to be able to do it right. So for the past eight years, we focused on making the gym the best possible experience that we can have for everybody. Um, and it's just now that we're getting to the point where we feel like we have the bandwidth uh, with full-time staff and great people like Molly, Devin, and Danielle to be able to launch a nutrition program the way that we would want to do it the entire time. So we're so happy to finally be able to bring this to you. So this is the first of many nutrition talks that we're gonna give to, to give a value add experience for you. Um, we will be recording these as well. So if you can't make it to one, you'll be able to see it on a video online. But let's talk about tips for a healthy summer. And by the way, Danielle and Devin have put in so much work behind the scenes to be able to bring this to fruition. I can't thank them enough for their dedication and, and all of the work that they've put in leading to be able to just help the first clients and, and be able to give this nutrition talk. So I wanna give you guys a hats off round of applause. So, all right, uh, let's start off with the basics. So if my mouse will click for me. Uh, so uh, we are using a team of registered dietitians behind us to make sure that we have the best program possible. That team is Healthy Steps Nutrition. Um, and the biggest thing that we're trying to do is simplify nutrition because we don't think that something as fundamental as nutrition should be complicated. So sometimes it's tough in execution to follow everything that we want to do, hence the accountability program. But we're here to make nutrition uncomplicated and make it as simple as it can possibly be. Um, I, I know that we're just starting with fuel at Odin, but the team at Healthy Steps Nutrition and the program that we're utilizing and that we're going to execute in the full ass way that we've done with everything at Odin is backed by a tremendous amount of experience working with gyms and working with clients across the country. Healthy Steps Nutrition has had 40,000 plus people come through it. Uh, and they have all kinds of different success stories. We will have our own success stories as we launch the program, and I hope many of you are a part of that. Um, but know that this is a proven method backed by science that has helped many people, right? So it may be new to us, but it's not new, and we're just gonna do it the best it's ever been done. So let's get into what we're talking about today. So summertime. Uh, the, the topic of the conversation today is tips for a healthy summer. And why do we need tips for a healthy summer? So a lot of people spend their time working to get ready for summer, but then we, we kind of fall off in the summertime and there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, a, a few statistics for you. Um, people consume way more sugar than they do in, in, or than they do throughout the year in summertime. Kids under 17, uh, it's been found that they drastically increase sugar consumption due to uh, all different kinds of factors, being out of their regular routine with school, consuming, sh consuming sugary drinks on an increased basis, uh, ice cream trips, all kinds of different things that happen throughout the summer, right, cause increased sugar. Only one in 10 parents found that their children consumed more vegetables in the summertime but a drastic majority of parents found that their kids had increased sugar consumption. The same is true for adults that were consuming more sugar in the summertime through alcoholic beverages, through all kinds of different things. And vacation is a large contributor to that. Um, the average weight gain while you're on vacation is one to three pounds. So uh, let's talk about kind of why that is. So the first reason is 
in the summertime, sleep generally tends to go down. This is not the direction that we want sleep to go, but it's what happens. So there's, there's a bunch of reasons for this. The first reason is schedule changes. The second reason is, is it's not even close to being dark out. I was at a lacrosse picnic with the family last night and Allison's like, hey, it's time to go. And it was eight o'clock when she was like, hey, it's time to go. I had absolutely no idea that it was eight o'clock because you don't get, you get used to the light at this point and your bedtime dra drastically changes. So it's something that we have to monitor so that we, I still had to be up at 3.30 this morning. So <laughs> no matter what time I went to bed. So you have to be mindful of that time as well. The other thing is activity goes down. When Devin goes through his part, he's gonna talk about why activity goes down in the summertime and get into a little bit more of how we can fight that. Um, but that, but that definitely happens. And the last thing that we talk about is calories generally increase. So when sleep goes down, activity goes down and calories increase, that's not a recipe for a healthy summer. So that's part of the things that we want to fight. So you spent so much time preparing for summer and getting ready for it and staying on your routine through the fall, the winter and the spring we want to talk about some basic tips that are going to help you have a fundamentally good summer. So uh, Danielle and Devin are going to go through the big tips. What's up peeps? What's up? So we're thinking about that first tip. Tip one is we want to be able to move more and sit less. So ideally, like we talk about during that summertime, we get very last day school, you know, we're trying to get ready in the springtime. And then once summer comes, we kind of like, eh, let me just go and just do my own thing. And you kind of now we're sitting a little bit more and not moving as much. As we all know, movement is the best medicine. So that is why we're here. We're trying to have healthier steps to our nutrition. Now with that, temperatures on the rise. Does everybody remember, what was it, like a week or two before Murph, how that temperature really spiked? And we were running outside and a lot of people were like, oh man, like it's really getting hot. And you start seeing people kind of fall out and make sure we're staying inside. Usually what happens is during the summertime, people tend, as it's hot outside, we tend to just stay inside opposed to actually going outside. And we need to think of like other ways that we can actually do to still keep active during that time frame. So like during the summertime and it's hot outside and we're staying inside, what other kind of activities can you do as you are actually when it's summertime other than, you know, just going to the gym? Throw some stuff out. Swimming, good. What other what other things can we do? Laying outside with your kids. Okay. Well, if you were laying outside with your kids, what can playing. you do? Playing. Okay, playing. Okay, good, 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 good. What else can we do? Maybe we like to hike. Maybe we have, you know, we're near some woods and we're hiking. Like thinking of the things that we can do during the summertime that it is hot outside, but thinking of things that we can get into that part where it's nice and cool, that we're still staying outside and we're staying mobile. Okay. All right, which brings us to a little bit more physical activity. Usually during this time, again, he says the activity goes down usually during the summertime. And usually what that is, is it's because it is hot, it is humid, and people are just feeling more comfortable to stay indoors to stay in that AC. But the idea is we want to get out as much as possible and get that movement going. Now, with this uh, physical activity, usually it's the same thing we do here at Odin. We want at least three to five times per week. The same thing applies during the summertime. I want you guys to get that routine, have that routine. Regardless if you're at vacations, we want that routine to not actually have to fall off. We have the travel wad for a reason. It's like when you're on vacation, it does not mean that movement has to stay still, okay? And ideally we are still looking, like you said, that swimming, thinking of other ways that we can continue to stay active, not just being outside, but being active during that summertime. This brings us to tip number two keeping cool in extreme heats. This is very, very important, especially when we were talking about hydration. Now here, we wanna talk about being near fans. We have fans throughout the entire gym. We're trying to keep us as cool as we possibly can. Also thinking about what we can actually drink. Now, ideally, somebody spitball and throw something out here. How much water do we usually drink a day? Sam, how much water do you usually drink a day? Hmm? A gallon. A gallon, okay, that's good. What else? How's everybody else's water intake? Don't be shy. Okay. Okay. What else? Three liters. Three liters. Okay. Now, how do you feel throughout the day during a hot day during that time if you're maybe only having 32 ounces of water or a little bit lower water intake? Well, I'm driving about like one in the afternoon. Mm. 
so it's like hydration is important like that is going to help us out throughout the whole day by the time you get to the gym and you're feeling dehydrated at that point it's already a little bit too late we need to be able to think about being hydrated throughout the entire day from morning all the way till night so we'll talk about hydration again hydration is key it is so important about so even right now i can feel myself a little dehydrated about say my water intake has not been good but we need to make sure that we're staying on top of it as much as we can and then we think about balancing that time inside and out. We talked about it earlier. Yes, it is hot, but there's other things that we can do to make sure we still get outside and make sure we're still getting that daily activity. Which then brings us to tip number three, eating a balanced diet. So we're looking at the screen here. Oh, oh, wrong one. No, you're good. Now, when we're talking about eating that balanced diet, we're thinking of things of, well, I'm going to go into the next uh, slide, that plate method. So with that eating those balanced diet, I'm gonna actually just go ahead and skip to that part. That balanced diet. So when we're looking at this plate here, we have about a quarter plate of protein, quarter plate of our, our, our carbs, and then a half plate of veggies. Now, it does not just stop here with just our meals. Ideally, we wanna have this same plate portion for our snacks too as well. We wanna make sure we're having a balanced meal with our snacks and our meals throughout the entire day so that way we are fueling our body the other 23 hours out of the day so that we can have a great workout in here for that one hour a day cool, cool, cool. so with that with that plate method if you're at a barbecue what do you think you can have for that plate method spitball throw some things out there you are thinking protein carbs veggies what are we thinking the hush puppies are carbs. <laughs> 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 what what other what other what other cards besides honesty? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. What about protein? Let's let's start with the protein. What do we think with protein? Hot dogs, burgers, maybe this grilled chicken. Okay. Pulled pork. Pulled pork. Okay. What about veggies? So People have like. Fatty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And buns. And buns. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Mm -hmm. We said full ass. <laughs> buns. Maybe some barbecue chicken would be a good alternative. And then what other kind of veggies? Like, because we, we want to stay lean. We want to have more of those lean meats. So there's corn and cob. Okay. Mushrooms, peppers. Good. What else? Salad. Good. I love broccoli salad in the summertime. Broccoli salad in the summertime. Okay, okay. Then we're going to kind of go to vacations. Probably one of the best ones. Vacations. What are we doing for our food or vacations? Are we planning? Are we maybe going out to restaurants and kind of paying attention to what we're actually eating? Like, Jay, you guys go on vacation. What are you, what are you guys eating? So, like, if we're going to the beach, mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're planning wraps for the day. Okay. So, like, some turkey with a, with a tortilla kind of wraps, and the tortilla hits the the turkey inside hits Perfect. the protein, mm -hmm. and then um, the I'm a sucker for like dill dip and a bag of vegetables at the beach mm. because it's very refreshing on mm -hmm. a long day. Mm -hmm. Cool. What else? What else are we having? Like if we're at a restaurant, what are we ordering at a restaurant if we're on vacation? And we're thinking about this plate method here. Yeah, see, I misunderstood you earlier. I was like, I realized you're now wanting me to think healthy. I was yeah. Just saying, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a trap. It was a trap. It was a trap. <laughs> so a lot of times too we're thinking like we want to eat those whole foods so a lot of times if we're eating out we really don't know what's happening how they're processing our food what they're cooking it with heck i went to outback and i got you know just grilled chicken with steak and i got veggies and a sweet potato but little did i know those veggies were saturated in butter so at that point the veggies did nothing for me for my nutritional value but it's like thinking of things like you can ask them like hey can you just steam my veggies like there's things that you can do to make sure that you are preparing yourself even while you're on vacation or you're at the beach to make sure that we're filling our bodies properly. Cool. Hey, one of my favorite dinner vacation, like vacation out dinners, mm -hmm. would be seafood. Because yes. it's probably a, a healthier option. Mm -hmm. Seafood is generally leaner mm -hmm. than, than meat blocking or land blocking protein. Land so blocking. like uh, some kind of grilled fish. <laughs> yeah, that, no. That's Did you say no, land blocking? <laughs> <laughs> That's new. Being, being honest, being honest, yes. So, so some kind of grilled shrimp mm -hmm. or grilled fish, you know, and mm -hmm. they're all good options uh, on vacation. Mm -hmm. And maybe something that you don't eat as often. Yeah, but definitely, yeah. Which then brings us to 
Tip number four. Whoop, whoop. All right, how do I go to the next slide? Oh, you just, Guys, you I'm guys. not tech savvy. So, I can, I can who's going to be my clicker? I can no, I'm just kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, can, I can literally click for you. I got you. it. Okay, 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 I, got okay. It. I got it. I got it. Yeah. All right, so as Jason already alluded to, all right, we know that in the summertime, he said, Typically, our activity might go down, our sugar consumption goes up. A lot of that sugar can be found in our beverages. It's like sneaky sugar, right? So if you think about a lemonade, like who doesn't enjoy a lemonade on a nice hot day? Well, in that lemonade, chances are there's a ton of added sugar. All right, so just your regular standard glass of lemonade has at least six teaspoons of added sugar. All right, a soda pop regular 12 ounce can, 10 teaspoons of added sugar. If you wanna go through Starbucks, a little drive through and get that nice little frappuccino, the caramel swirl on top, you know, nice and refreshing, 20 teaspoons or more of added sugar. AHA recommends that we have as females, no more than six teaspoons of added sugar a day. <laughs> <laughs> for my fellas it's no more than nine right so if we've had that lemonade ladies you hit your quota for the day okay if we have that soda we've all hit our quota for the day if we have that frap we've gone above and beyond okay now in addition to the sugar what about alcohol right who doesn't enjoy a nice cold Bev in the summertime. All right, we see a lot of sneaky calories, sneaky sugars added into your alcohol drinks, especially your mixed drinks. I was supposed to hit something, wasn't I? Guys. <laughs> the effects, okay? <laughs> Sugar goes up, your weight goes up. All right, so circling back to that alcohol. Okay, so also too, I didn't do it. All right, so with your alcohol too, when we drink alcohol, all right, chances are we're probably not hydrating during that time. We might just be alcohol drink, alcoholic drink after alcoholic drink, right? We're not getting that water in that Devin talked about earlier, okay? Also too, what kind of food choices do we make when we've started drinking alcohol? <laughs> right. So we tend to lean away from that plate method that Devin just talked about, and we're going for the pizza. We're going for the curly fries. We're going for the mozzi sticks. You know what I mean? That comfort food, that feel-good food. We want to soak up that alcohol, right? So who enjoys a margarita? Me. Right. So we just talked about ladies, six teaspoons of added sugar, gents, nine. That margarita, 20 teaspoons, okay? So... What maybe could we substitute in place of that? Straight vodka. You guys, I like, I like it. All right, so maybe we're going to turn that into a tequila soda water with some lime, okay? How about that pina colada? I mean, I love a good pina colada, but again, it's loaded with sugar. So some of our healthier mixed drink options are going to be that dirty martini, that tequila soda water vodka, soda water, red wine, champagne, and then light beer. All right, and then also making sure that we are having a drink and then having a glass of water. Okay, then potentially having another drink and having a glass of water. But we are going into the evening with a plan, right? Okay, so if we drink water along with our alcoholic drink, we're gonna feel fuller and we're gonna be staying hydrated, okay? If we eat a healthy meal before we go out, we're not gonna make those poor choices on the late night, right? Right, okay. Okay, find an accountability partner. So, accountability partner, that's someone that is going to push you, that's gonna hold you accountable, okay? Who in here has an accountability partner in the gym? I have an accountability couple. <laughs> oh. All right, so we've already discussed how our physical activity may decrease during the hot summer months. We also know that lack of structure, routine, and sleep also add to the list of the barriers, right? Having that accountability partner pushes you. You don't want to let that person down, 
right? For me, it's my husband. I don't necessarily get to work out with him every day because he's traveling all the time. But you better believe that we talk about our workouts. We make it a little bit competitive, right? Um, another example, folks at my work, they're all into the Pelotons. Okay, well, there's an app on the Peloton, and they created a kite team. Okay, so they can check up on each other through that app, right? And they can push each other. Again, they keep it a little competitive, make it fun. All right, so I challenge you that if you don't already have someone that's helping you stay accountable with your nutrition and fitness goals, that you find one. Look around in this room, you know what I mean? Grab anybody, anybody that you're friends with in class, your spouse, whomever, okay? She's absolutely right. Utilize it. There's <laughs> <laughs> always going to be one hater. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, to Allison's point, too, though, like it is super motivating. For me, especially, like, we've got other pregnant females in the gym, you know, and me being pregnant now, like, I love to see what they're doing, and it is definitely super motivating to know that, like, okay, if they can do it, I can do it, or, like, vice versa. So, like, it, using sugar wad is huge. Um, all right, so last but not least, our sixth tip, that is don't forget to sleep. So lack of proper sleep also leads to a risk of being obese. Reason being, all right, when we're tired, are we making the best food choices? Probably not, right? We're feeling kind of lousy, whatever it may be. And so we reach what is ever comforting or whatever feels easy at the time. All right. As adults, we need to be getting seven hours plus, right? If we're working out in here every day, plus a night of sleep. Who thinks that they get seven hours of restful sleep a night? So not even half the room, right? So, um, oh, I hit the wrong button, guys. Sleep routines, right? So I challenge you to come up with like a wind down routine. So what that may look like is turning off the electronics, getting away from the phone like 30 minutes beforehand, okay? making sure that your room temperature is nice and comfortable, all right? It's cool. You're going to sleep better if it's cool in your bedroom, okay? We're shutting those curtains. Maybe we're, sleep we're having some sleepy time tea, whatever that may be for you. But you want to limit all distractions around. For me personally, sleep is challenging, especially present state. I'm having a hard time getting comfortable, whatever. So I have done the things. My room is like blacked out, okay? It's super cold in there. My phone charges in another room. It's not even near me at all when I sleep. All right, I had a clock in my room. It became a rabbit hole. I would wake up, I would look at the clock, and then I'd be like, I only have three hours left. I only have two hours left. I only have one hour left. The clock's gone, all right? So do what you need to do, all right, to set yourself up for success. If Molly's willing, I would love for her to share her bedtime routine because this girl net seven to eight hours a night of uninterrupted sleep.
alluding back to what she said about the, you know, she puts her phone on do not disturb or whatever. Have you guys seen that meme that's like, if you text me at 1030 at night, you will get a response at 439 in the morning. Totally this girl. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, and I probably respond immediately. <laughs> All right, but also to that point, right, making sure that we are exercising during the day is going to help us sleep. Making sure that we're staying hydrated during the day is going to help us sleep. Making sure that we are eating balanced meals, that plate method, is going to help us sleep. All right, not eating a bunch of junk. Who's like a snack before bedtime person? Yeah. So if it's something sweet or maybe it's that like, you know, cocktail before bed or whatever, those are things that are actually going to stimulate you and wake you up and not help you sleep. Okay? So rethink those. If we are snacking in the evening, I'm not saying you can't, but make sure that we're making wise choices there. Okay? But I challenge you to come up, if you're struggling with sleeping, to come up with a nice, healthy bedtime routine. What works for Molly works for Molly. What works for me works for me. But, you know, find what works for you. Okay? With that, I'm going to turn it back over to Jason. It's, I'm going to share my number one sleep uh, tip. Alice and I have been married for a long time. We, we share a bed at home. Uh, I, I, I love running into her in bed sometimes, you know. I, uh, <laughs> but, but... Bed is also for sleep as well, and and we found this. <laughs> we found this wonderful thing that that it's the simplest thing in the world, and it has been the greatest thing in the world. We have separate comfort separate comforters. Mm. I I. I, I hey, 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 here, here. So so I. I, I sleep hotter than Allison does. I, I, I'm warm in general, so I like a thinner blanket. Um, I also move around. It, we have separate blankets. They're, they're each on our side of the bed, right? So when we come into each other's blanket, it's intentional. But when we're not in each other's blanket, right, it's, it's time for sleep, right? And, and so that is, that is my sleep tip of the day. Um, it, all of these things that we've talked about are not meant to make you perfect. It's not meant to take the fun out of your summer. It's exactly the opposite. When we want to have a good time and we want to let loose a little bit, uh, we want to do it intentionally. And so all of these things are meant to make more mindful decisions during the times where you're not trying to let loose, right? Um, I, I mean, we talked about sugar. Little things like replacing the sugar in lemonade uh, with Splenda instead can make a huge difference on caloric load. When you add that up over the entire summer, it makes a huge difference. So we're just talking about some mindfulness and some intentionality because little things make big changes, right? So um, I, we wanna go through kind of the basics. Um, I clicked that. Uh, the, the basics. We'll it's not just me, arrow. guys. No, it's, so uh, we wanna go through the basics of of the HSN and fuel principles. Uh, and the first one is add more whole foods into your diet, right? It, so this is a very basic thing of shop the perimeter of the grocery store. The outside of the grocery store is the real food. The inside of the grocery store is the processed food. So we're talking about where the fruits and vegetables are. We're talking about where the meats are. We're talking about where the dairy is. That's real food. You can tell what it was before it was processed in a factory. If it came from a factory, right, it's edible, but that doesn't make it whole foods. So we're gonna go back to that plate method that Devin reviewed. This is the big thing uh, to make sure that we eat that whole foods and balanced diets. Notice everything on that plate is a whole food, so the other things are, are options for when we're done eating our whole foods, right? So the other thing is focus on balance. Each meal and each snack should have a balance between protein, carbs, and fats. Is every snack going to have half of a plate of vegetables? Definitely not, right? But can every snack that we eat have protein, carbs, and fats involved in it, right? Allison, what's your snack at the gym? My snack. Which afternoon snack? Yeah. Yogurt and a piece of fruit. So yogurt has protein. Yogurt has a little bit of natural fat from the dairy in it. 
right? We could also add some nuts to that. Molly's got a big bag of nuts in her office. Uh, oh, it's right there. It's not in her office, right? Uh, so that brings the plant-based fat that we're looking for. And the fruit is a great source of natural carbohydrates. So um, we talked about late night snacks, right? Something before bed. I think that a yogurt parfait is a great late night snack, especially if it's a frozen yogurt. It's something that contains protein. We can add some jam or jelly to it. We can add some peanut butter to it for that plant-based fat. There's ways that we can make all of these things still enjoyable, but focus on that balance. The last principle is limit the amount of added sugar that you're consuming daily. So this is, added sugar is, is something that just adds to weight gain. Very straightforward and simple. If you're consuming more sugar, you're going to add more weight. So um, this is an easy way to, to track, to cut out any added sugar. Alcoholic beverages are a big one of them. Drinks are another big one of them. And, and a, a sneaky one is also condiments. We talked about those barbecues uh, in the summertime, very sugar-laden barbecue sauce, very sugar-laden sauces. Uh, coleslaw can have a lot of sugar in it sometimes. We sneak sugar into places that it doesn't belong and having less sugary options is a great choice for this. So uh, we wanna go through some frequently asked questions that we get a lot uh, uh, around nutrition that we can kind of get out of the way in the beginning. So the first one is, Molly, what should I eat uh, around my workout? So you can see Molly has a protein shake and a banana, right? <laughs> and, and, and so, so uh, around your workout, this is both before and after the workout, is, is we want to have some source of protein and some source of easily processed carbohydrates. Um, the big thing that you're using when you work out is, is carbohydrates. Uh, and, and so we wanna be able to replenish the carbohydrates before so that we have something to use. And then we wanna add carbohydrates in back afterwards so that, so that our body has energy to go about the day. And then protein is the thing that repairs our muscles. How do we build bigger muscles? We tear holes in them, right? Our muscles tear apart with little micro tears and then we build our muscles back by filling them in and we fill them in with protein. So if your body doesn't have protein, you tear your muscles and you're not able to repair them. So protein is a really important source for especially after the workout. Yes. So, I heard it's better to just do it right after you work out. It is 100 percent better to do it right after you work out. Your body wants it to be available directly afterwards. Um, and, and if you like protein shakes, then protein shakes are great. Um, I personally, I, like I like protein shakes when they're necessary for me, but I'm like I like to eat. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna be very honest about that. Like I, I, my, the amount of protein that I would like to put in my body in a day, I want it to come in the form of food because protein shakes don't satiate me as much as, as food does. So after my workout, um, if you ever look in the fridge, Alice and I have a collection of yogurt that is in the fridge, um, and, and, and that's my go-to after workout snack is, is like a skewer yogurt. The Icelandic, it's low sugar, um, and, and they come in both 2% and 4% fat options. It's wonderful. Um, the, the one thing with yogurt that you have to look out for is that added sugar. So, but protein after the workout, like quickly is, is, is a good thing. A Great question. question.
reduces your, your risk for injuries, things like muscle strains, muscle tears, those little tweaks and aches and pains. A lot of times it comes from either uh, dehydration is a big one or a lack of protein for that recovery. Those are really common reasons why, you know, some people say, I don't know what's going on. I just keep tweaking this or tweaking that. I'm like, cool, like, what are you having after your workout? Oh, nothing. I go and run my kids around for four hours and then I do a shake before bed. It's like, we're, we're missing. It, the first thing that we also talk about when it comes to muscle soreness is nutrition, right? Uh, if you're overly sore, we're, we're trying to figure out why you're overly sore. It's not generally the workout, it's generally how your body's recovering from the workout, right? All right, next. Some people come to us and, and they see this plate method, they're like, I mean, that's great and all, I just don't like vegetables all that much. What should I do, right? This is a challenge, uh, and, and it's a challenge because have you eaten enough vegetables to decide that you don't like vegetables, right? I hated Brussels sprouts growing up. I also hated lima beans when I was growing up, and I realized, I, I, Mom, I'm sorry if you're watching this on YouTube when it goes on there later, that I hated the way my mom cooked Brussels sprouts and lima beans. I didn't hate Brussels sprouts and lima beans. And, and so um, different cooking methods and different seasonings uh, are, are different are, are great things to try there's also a ton of seasonal vegetables that you can try um, and, and so I would try and eat the rainbow of all of the different things with all of the different cooking methods uh, we have a ton of different recipes for vegetables um, there's also a ton of ways that you can hide vegetables in different things um, a great option for a morning snack or a breakfast would be a smoothie and spinach is absolutely wonderful in a smoothie because it doesn't show up as spinach very much, especially if you cover it up with mango and yogurt, right? So, so these are all ways that you can hide vegetables. Um, if you don't like like steamed vegetables because they're too mushy for you, roasting vegetables is a wonderful way. The air fryer is a really good option for a ton of vegetables. We use our air fryer, like I think that we've gone through six of them in the past four years, right? Like Same it, it is, like I, we, we burn our air fryer to death. We have two. Um, we have two too. So yeah. uh, it, it, other cooking methods, like a sous vide is, is even a really interesting cooking method uh, for vegetables. It brings a ton of flavor. So uh, my challenge to you is if you don't love vegetables, I would say that you just haven't found the way that you like vegetables or tried them enough to get there. Uh, so this is a start small and get bigger kind of thing. All right, the biggest question is, is I don't know where to start, right? Like nutrition, all of this seems so insurmountable. I have all of this information, but where do I begin? Well, first of all, I'm gonna give a shameless plug for us, uh, is this, this is the entire reason why we have this program. Uh, we have fuel because we wanna help people incrementally build long-term healthy habits. Um, now, the biggest thing is, is what you're doing right now has got you to where you are at this moment. So it's not going to drastically change um, it, without making a change. So I would say that the biggest thing is to make a small change that is sustainable. Who's tried Whole30 before or paleo or keto or something along those lines? I have, right? Keep your hand up if you're still doing it, right? So none of us are still doing that thing. So the where should I start is not a cut out everything and go on something majorly restrictive that's not sustainable. This whole entire program that we're putting together is trying to build you habits for life so that you can just make long-term healthy changes without completely disrupting your life. We want you to look back a couple years from now and say, look at all the progress that I've made. I noticed it happening but it wasn't this major life change where it was like, all right, I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna throw out everything in my cabinets, right? That's not what we're going for. We're looking for small changes that build over a long period of time. So if you don't have an idea of what small changes to build over a long period of time, 
That is something that Devin, Danielle, and I would love to discuss with you if you want to talk more about it. All right, summer's a time to be fun. We want it to still be fun. Uh, the, the big thing that I said before is we just want to be more mindful of what we're doing. It doesn't mean don't go to the barbecue. It doesn't mean don't have the alcoholic beverage. It doesn't mean don't have fun while you're on vacation. It doesn't mean don't have ice cream with your kids. It doesn't mean any of those things. It means enjoy those things, but be intentional about when you're enjoying them. And maybe we don't need to do all of those things at once. You don't need the ice cream and six margaritas, right? We can have a couple of tequila sodas with a squirt of lime with a water in between and have a small ice cream instead of a large ice cream because we realize that the second scoop really doesn't fulfill us that much more than the first does, right? We can plan a healthy lunch while we're at the beach instead of going to the roadside stand that has tacos and tortilla chips and everything else and then enjoy ourselves at dinner, right? So it's about balance between, uh, between the decisions that we're making and not just giving in to everything, right? So before we finish, I just I talk about Fuel real fast. Fuel is a habit-based nutrition and accountability coaching program. We call it for the other 23 hours in our day um, because we, we love it when we have you here for an hour a day and you're making really good choices and coming to the gym and busting your ass and, and going full ass and working really hard. Um, but the other 23 hours in the day, what you do while you're sleeping or, or while you're not sleeping and you're supposed to be sleeping, right? <laughs> um, it, what you do while you're in the kitchen, all of this contributes to your success here, uh, but it also contributes to everything long term overall. So back to um, the, the nutrition program. This nutrition program that we're doing is science based. It is habit based. It is set up to help you be successful. Uh, we're happy to talk to you about it. Uh, we can sit down with you, learn about what your specific goals are and help you get an understanding of what would be the right next step for you. Um, it, and the last thing is we want your summer to be fun. We want our summer to be fun. Summer's a great time to enjoy yourself, but it's also a great time to be mindful about things, to set ourselves up for a really good fall and holiday season as well. So uh, we're gonna open it up to questions for all of us. Um, so anything that you guys wanna talk about, summer related, nutrition related, fuel related, uh, we're here. Bring it. Tori. HSN. It's healthy, healthy steps nutrition. Uh, it is, it is a program run by a registered dietitian named Nicole Acoin. Um, they are out of Georgia, Florida. Florida, excuse me, Florida. I mean, I, Florida, Georgia line, same thing, right? Like, like yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, somewhere below the Mason Dixon. I uh, were below the Mason Dixon line. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's a team of registered dietitians. They work with a lot of CrossFit gyms. Um, yeah, yeah, so, so they, 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 yeah, she owns a CrossFit gym, also named HSN, right? Um, and so her CrossFit gym is kind of a, a testing ground for her nutrition program. Her nutrition program is her, is her main business. Um, but it is, it is something that they've worked with CrossFit gyms for years. Um, and, and they help CrossFit gyms implement nutrition programs uh, within their four walls, essentially. Cool. Yep. Thanks. What's the pricing? The pricing? So uh, that's something that we can sit down and talk about. Um, it, we have two different models. Um, it, there's an introductory period for the first, uh, for the first three uh, sessions of 28 weeks, uh, and then it goes down to a lower price for ongoing. Um, and uh, I'm sorry. Well, it's the first three sessions of four weeks, which is 12 weeks. Um, so it, the, the big picture pricing is it's $199 for the first uh, uh, four weeks uh, times three. And then after that, it goes down to a lower price of $159 per month. And that includes a whole bunch of things that we can sit down and talk about. Yep. Other questions? Jerry. So when you guys were all going through training and everything, and considering that this is... We all are 
part of CrossFit. You know, when we look at this measure called BMI, mm -hmm. should we just toss it out the window because? So I, I mean, so 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 the whole thing is yes and no, and and so, um, I, like my BMI is high. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you, yeah. and and and, 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 and so, um, the w BMI is one thing, and it's not one thing to be completely ignored, but it's one thing to be taken into account with a ton of other factors, right? And so we're when we when we do things with our athletes um it, we're going to take a ton of different biometrics and calculating your bmi is one of those things but it's not the only thing by any means and it's not the thing above taking measurements of of different areas including your abdomen your arms your thigh um, so that we can see changes uh, if that's what you're looking for uh, but the other thing is that we do body fat testing uh, through uh, electrodes that send a, a small electrical current all the way through your body so that we can see a change in body fat if you're trying to lose visceral fat, right? So BMI is not the greatest measure for people who have a lot of muscle mass because it treats any weight as, as being equal, right? And muscle is really healthy for your metabolism because muscle boosts your metabolism and, and visceral fat brings it down, right? So we do want to put on muscle, uh, but if you put on muscle, that does raise your BMI to that point. For the average public that doesn't work out like we do, BMI is a very valuable piece of information. It becomes less valuable when you have an increase in lean muscle mass. When your legs look like tree trunks. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Skies out, thighs out. Yeah. Great questions. What else? How do I handle snacks for Simon, or how do I handle snacks for me? How do you handle snacks for Simon and not eat Simon's snacks? Or <laughs> does, your kid just, does your kid diet also have to be elevated? Because that's where, like, it's like a real-world real struggle. Sometimes you're making up the raisins and goldfish. So, you know, I, I mean, uh, he, here's a, here's a real-life thing. Simon has parents who own a gym. So, um, I mean, we have a nine-year-old, and this isn't, this is what I hope that all parents eventually get to teaching their child. Um, but we have a nine-year-old that can tell me what a, what's a protein, what's a fat, and what's a carbohydrate. And we talk about that with him while he's eating his dinner because I want to build lifelong nutrition for him so that he doesn't go through some of the same struggles that I went through uh, at certain points in life. So um, does Simon eat goldfish? Sure, sometimes. But we try and balance those goldfish with a yogurt so that he gets protein and carbohydrates in the same meal. Does he have vegetables in his lunch every day? You're damn right he does, right? Um, and, and he gets stuff from other kid at, kids at school sometimes that it's either like your lunch is weird or I want your lunch, right? It's like one or the, one, one or the other, right? Um, uh, but he doesn't get bags of Doritos every single day. Um, he rarely gets bags of Doritos. And, and I think that that's okay because when he does have those things, it's a special treat. It's not like the, the common thing. Um, and so I, I, we were at a barbecue over the weekend at a friend's house, one of Simon's friend's parents. So Simon is there and playing. And she was telling us about a time that, that he was over at their house and she served lunch. And he was like, can I have a salad? <laughs> and, and, and she was like, I'll eat a salad with you. And, and so the, my, my point there is, is children are products of the environment that they're in a lot. And if we treat them like they should be eating those things, then they tend to eat those things because they don't know any different. Um, uh, do you have anything you want to add to that?
be wary. Be wary of the fact that it's more expensive when you take them out. And he's like, can I get the lox bagel, please, and, and a side of fruit? And, like, it, yeah. I'm like, Yeah. I know I know for my my son's only two and a half, but he now enjoys cooking with us. Yes. So it also kinda helps like okay, like he's cooking so he feels proud so now he wants to eat it but regardless of maybe it might be not something that he likes. But he's physically seeing us do it, he's watching us eat it, which is in turn is helping him actually want to eat it too as well. So being willing to have those conversations and as they get older, like with sports, now it's a big conversation. Sign your practice. It's, and, and we have talked to him specifically, and this is something that's good for all of us, is we have two wants, right? And so for Simon at the lacrosse game, he might want the pizza right now, but he also wants to perform well at the lacrosse game. And so part of the language that we talk to him is, in is, do you want the pizza or do you want to perform better? Which one is more important to you, right? And this is the way that we can phrase a whole lot of things it, with ourselves as well, is we have these goals that we want. Maybe the goal is weight loss. Maybe the goal is performing better in the gym. Maybe the goal is a good night of sleep. Maybe the goal is whatever it is, but we have this other want right now, right? Maybe that want is, the cocktail before bed. Maybe that one is ice cream, right? So I, I, I want all of us to frame it like we would frame it for Simon and say, I have these two wants, which one do I want more? And then make the informed decision. But if you decide, if you decide to have the cocktail or decide to have the ice cream without at least addressing the other wants of your long, longer term goal, then you're making an uninformed, mindful, less decision. And so I, we're not saying give up on all of the, the, the vices of life. We're saying make informed decisions. This is a great question. Yeah. Yeah. What else we got? Anything? Right, this is the first of many. Uh, we're, we're going to be doing this the last Thursday in June the last Thursday in July, and we will have uh, some other things set up. Um, if you guys are interested in fuel, you can grab any one of us and talk to us. Um, we're happy to work with you in any way possible. Um, 